Welcome back into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint, and this is a fun, casual conversation. And we're going to show some appreciation for Student Appreciation Day, which was awesome. Justin Zwick was there. Yes. Nicole Cox was there. Bobby was somewhere. He just didn't want to come hang out with yeah, us. He was, inside, he was inside the red lines. You know, oh, we he, had he to was, stay outside the red lines. Bob was calling plays. Yes. But Bobby Carpenter is also back. <laughs> what did you think Saturday, since you didn't want to come hang out with us? Um, a lot of... What I think has been happening most of the spring, uh, you know, everybody's been enamored with Jeremiah Smith, like, but he's been doing that every practice. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. So, like, watching those, everybody's like, oh, my God. I'm like, yeah, it's what has been happening to all Bobby, of Bobby, it was the first time for some of us, though. Like, yeah, me. Right. My, my, my only practice, I get to so something. quick, right? <laughs> You're stealing all my thunder over I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. You could probably slide into a couple more, Nicole, if you, if you wanted Actually, to. Actually, I kind of learned she this. could have gone in before <laughs> me. She had the all you roosters. Have to do is all you have to do is show up with some roosters, put it in the hallway, and then just walk out to practice. I know. Like, I would never like, do that. I'm such a rule Why? follower. She had the all-access they, they wouldn't even care. I know. Jerry, my, Jerry was like, sure. why are you waiting with Austin? Nicole, you can go <laughs> out there it. right now. Yeah. <laughs> you guys get to pull around the back. You can go to the van, just walk <laughs> on back and cruise all around. And I was like, Nicole, why are you? So you go out there and tell me what you saw. That's, <laughs> yeah. Get to you work. Have to wait with them. I yeah. didn't want to get separated. I mean, I was focused. Separated. I was like going to stay with our team so we could, you know, watch it together and I could learn as much as I could. I walked up there, there the truck going. I mean, everybody was mm-hmm. rocked and ready to go. And then I was like, 4,400 oh. And I joked, I was like, Nicole, not right here. And they're like, yeah. Yeah, not today. And then I apparently you were just Eric knew. I told him end. I go, I can't come talk until after because last I time I didn't see him though. I, I, he must have been when I pulled uh, up, he must have been doing something else. Last time I talked the entire time was yeah. headed over to Austin, got to see one play and then practice was over. So that's the problem. That's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Pulled into conversation. Start seeing people you haven't seen in a while and I'll say, Hey, how are you? And then you're like, I'm trying to pay attention. We made that adjustment this year though. We did. So what did you think, Nicole? It was should have started with you, not Bob. Yeah. So I'm going to say this from a, you guys know, just like a fan perspective of, I've only been to one other one where I got to see one play because I was talking the entire time, which is just me. That's what I think I'm, it was my job. more than one. In, yeah, it was like two. It was like three. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't very many. So I have to say, and I was talking to Burma about it earlier, it was very overwhelming. And I realized it was overwhelming because I was trying to watch offense and defense yeah. at the same time. And then... There's the reason why there's a lot of position so coaches out there. You, you <laughs> can't, you literally can't watch everything. And then I was like, you know what I should have done is thought in advance of who specifically I want to watch and just keep watching those people. But I'm one of those people. I want to see it all. So that was difficult, but it was, it was amazing. Like it was really cool to see <clears throat> the guys. It just gets you so pumped up for football season. And um, Bobby already stole the thunder because you know this is old news to him but it's jeremiah simple. smith yeah. seeing it i yeah. it was unbelievable like you even looked over at me and i was like staring at the play like what just happened when Devin kind of made a pass that was underthrown and denzel had should great have been, coverage should have been intercepted mm-hmm. denzel burke looked amazing <clears throat> he was great and had great coverage and jeremiah smith just pivoted caught the pass the underthrown pass and just made it look like it was just another simple day you know he was incredible it was ridiculous mm-hmm. and, and that was speed. and you, you could argue like was that even the most that was even the best one, one. the no. first one was the one, better the one on jermaine matthews yeah. juggling and acrobatic in yeah. the air yeah that was but a, I apparently bob, bob said he's just doing that every single day so he does that like that. days one and two <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like okay it, yeah is he just going to continue doing that? And I think that's the thing Ryan has tried to temper expectations with it, where you don't want to call a freshman while he's going to be a starter for us. Because not Aren't that he'll slide back. If he says afterwards, I got to be careful about what I say, yeah. that's not actually slow play in the hype. That's well, it's him being, I need to parcel out my words so that there's no headline that's thrown out there where yep. Ryan Day says this about the guy. Because he is a true, I mean, is an early enrollee. He will <laughs> be a true freshman. Yes. He's got practice Prom nine times. Yeah. I mean, I thought that ball was going to, I was on the same sideline as it. So I lost it as it was traveling down. I'm watching the trajectory. I saw where Denzel was. I thought he made an, I thought he intercepted it. And then I'm like, wait a second. He caught that because all the offensive guys are going wild. I'm like trying to look out there and see. It was, it was truly remarkable. And yeah. before, just before Bobby talks about it, I also, and Bobby, you're going to have to help me because I, you know, was scribbling and holding my sheet, which I don't have next to me. Number 32, Inky. Yeah. Yeah, the is, DB. Yeah. yeah. Johnson. He, yeah. I was really impressed with him, yeah, too. He was, he was all like, over the place. He's Play super fast yeah. and broke up two passes. Big and too. He was. Yeah. I mean, he really stood out to me, too. 
Lefty had a, a great scrimmage. I yeah, don't think I, Bob I was going to talk about him. Okay, but, good. No, hey. I think that's a good one, Nicole, because we talked about it. He made a play right there in the corner of the end zone mm-hmm. when we were down there. And Twice. I saw a couple others that he yeah, he was getting his head in there. So that was good to see. See, the problem but, is that some of the guys have changed numbers. So I'm, I oh, didn't. Hard. I <laughs> had a Inky sheet. Jones. I'm going to get that right. Inky Johnson is somebody I covered like 10 years ago, 12 yeah. years ago at Tennessee. Inky Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll get that right. We don't. That was good. Though. <clears throat> But Lathan Ransom was out, and Lee Hartford were both out, so you had an opportunity. And I don't even think so uh, is Jihad. I don't think practice. He haven't seen him there. So that's either. what I'm saying. Like Malik, they knew was going to be out. He was, you know, still battling the shoulder. Lathan, I think that that's they're slow playing him with mm. the foot injury, and so you get to see a lot of these young guys, and you know, Just adding to the depth that they have. Yeah, right? it's it's big. I know Tim Mullen's like, hey, we're going to put him out there. These guys, this is don't tell me you didn't get an opportunity because mm-hmm. you're getting plenty of opportunities to play against these guys. Go make the most of it right now. And so they're trying to figure out who can do what. Another guy who I thought played uh, really well, and his his brother gets so much of the hype. I thought Lorenzo Styles has really played well, like in in camp because you know you obviously have Jordan Hancock that plays the inside corner and very talented guy can play safety, probably play outside corner. That's what he came in doing, you know, and he can do a lot of that stuff. But the versatility, as you saw, like guys get nicked up, people have moved around, having him being a guy that can shift around or just potentially having two guys that are are really skilled at inside corner, depending on what type of matchups you're facing with the different receivers to have him go out there. So Lorenzo styles, I thought has done a really good job and you really need like a basket of nine guys that can play because you're going to have three or four guys that can play outside. You need a couple of safeties. You need a couple of guys that can play inside. And so if you can put together like nine guys that you feel comfortable and confident going into a game, because you also have to remember they're, they're playing on trying to play 15 games this year. Like right. that's a big deal. And right. they want to play more than 15. Well, ideally, wait, 16, not 17, hopefully, just 16. But we'll yeah. see. Just 17 16. if necessary, 16. For sure. That's 16 for sure. for sure. I was trying. I, I missed the math on that. But watching him play, I think that that uh, gives the Ohio State some nice depth. And he was a really good sa- safety like corner in high school. And, you know, when he went to Notre Dame to play wide out, I'm like, okay, he wants to go play receiver. Coming back here, I think this is more of a natural home for him, and he's looked really good doing it. He and Sonny, uh, junior and senior, spending a ton of time in the Woody. You can tell how much they enjoy, like, Working out as brothers and that opportunity to be oh, back sure. together, and family awesome. stuff like you see you see them in a good amount, <clears throat> fam. fam yeah. but, right. the, but for real, fam, brother, or a literal yeah, brother. brotherhood. Yes, mm-hmm. Jay Z. What what did you take away? Oh gosh, I, I think our can of chips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got a tray of chips. I mean, so that's what yeah. I took. That was the. I mean, that was probably the best thing I took <laughs> you away. On, you were on an absolute beeline Listen. once you got that tray of chips. I'm oh. standing over there like. Hoping I can catch your eye, like, hey, hey, bud. What do you got? Nope. Oh, and no. he's like, I'm not looking over there. And he's he, straight through here. Let's go, Nicole. We're out. <laughs> Let's get out of here. That We're was out, the Nicole. Let's go. You walked all day well, to get anywhere. Yeah, that was an exciting. <laughs> that was an exciting part of my day. I cool. will admit. Okay. Uh, cool. 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 <clears throat> but I, but I did feel. No, I'm. This is my first practice I've been to, but I, I felt better watching the quarterbacks. I, I think Devin's giving Will probably as much as he can right now. I mean, Devin looked pretty good. They all looked. Good. Uh, so everybody saw really that. Nice everybody balls. you know looked at some of the bad uh, that he's one hundred percent. And then now, but I mean, well, I don't watch like he's he's made yeah, some he, really he's nice made throws. Some throws. I, I think maybe even his motion you know may have changed a little bit over you know the off season. Um, but I, I think Devin is is giving everything he can, and I think that is probably closer than what they thought. Bringing an old you know four year yeah. guy in. Um, so so I think that's going to be a good battle. And then you know. The young guys, Kleinholtz and, and Sane, I think, jumped out to me as the younger guys. Um, but, man, they threw some really nice balls as well. So, I, I feel better there. I, you know, I, I think Will is a big dude. And, and I, I think if they want to go in and have that Chip Kelly offense we kind of talked about last week where, you know, run the quarterback a little bit, I, I could see them, you know, going with the guy who has the experience, who has the size, who, who's been in there and done that, and just, you know, see how that goes. So, I mean, it's going to be an interesting battle, but I, I think Will probably comes out on top um, there in that. But. A receiver we didn't talk about that I thought had a good day. Number 13. Bryson Rogers. Bryson yeah. Rogers. He made a few little play. I mean, across the middle going and, and getting some nice digs. And, you know, quarterbacks were, of course, putting it on him. But he, he jumped out a couple times. Now, I know they have a stacked room. He was the one that was in the portal but, came, but returned. Came back. He the survived portal, the, the portal. He survived boomerang. the portal. But, I mean, he, he, he made some plays. I don't know where he could fit in, you know, how that how that looks. I don't think Brandon Ennis was, was practicing. He did not. Uh, Saturday, so I, I wanted to see him just because they had kind of talked about, uh, you know, how he, he's come along and different things they might want to try with him. But 
you know, Bryson Rogers, I thought had a good day and he might be, you know, just a young guy that nobody's really paying attention to that might be working his way in. I don't know. There, there's a lot of guys there. I mean, I understand. It's tough. The top four, even with Brandon in this not practicing, you, you can pretty safely assume that he's going to be in there yeah. working in the slot uh, when he's been practic- part of practice before that, a lot of rave reviews for what he can do. Yeah. But it goes the same thing as Bobby was talking about with the secondary. I mean, you're going to be playing a lot of games this year. You know, you want guys to be rotating, and you want to feel good about those guys coming in if, if you need to. So, I think it's interesting at the stuff that you talked about at quarterback, Jay-Z, because it doesn't – at least for Saturday, and that's all that I can really talk about for watching a full practice, there didn't seem to be much noticeable separation to me. And I am not a head coach, quarterback's coach, professional talent evaluator. Last year, when we talked about that, it's like, well, they're going back and forth. Devin Brown and Kyle McCord, they're trading it back and forth. Ryan Day wants to see separation. He's not seeing that. That felt like more of a problem. On Saturday, it was like, right now, it feels like, it's because they're both doing some yes. good things that maybe weren't happening last spring. And some of that may well be that the offensive line is doing better work right now than it was at this time a year ago. I, when they're not having to face blitzes from Sonny Styles and CJ Hicks, which <laughs> makes it almost uh, unfair. So it's, they're to the point now, and that's the part of the problem is now they're getting a little more exotic. So it's going to be mm-hmm. interesting for quarterbacks. You heard Ryan talking about it, guys getting their eyes right and understanding their reads. Where at the beginning of camp, it's like, ah, you know, we're doing basic first and second down, vanilla stuff. All of a sudden, you get into more of those third down situations. You get into the red zone situations. Things are happening a lot lot faster. faster, You've got to identify the read, where you're going with the ball right now, and you've got to be able to put it on guys with accuracy. So I think you'll begin to see those separations starting to occur, hopefully sooner rather than later. I think they have tempered back the defensive line a little bit to kind of give those guys some space. And time and Ryan's done a really good job of like they're rotating a lot on that right side trying to find combinations. You know, with you watch Fryer playing both guard and tackle, Tegger's playing some tackle, Luke Montgomery's playing some guard, and kind of how that'll all shake out and who will be the guys they'll roll with there. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be an interesting interesting conversation moving here over the next two weeks to see if there's any separation there because those guys are the ones that make it easy on your on your quarterback if you have time they're going to be able to run the ball pretty well but can you have time to find those guys down the field justin fry talked about that on monday uh, along with all of those guys on the offensive line and luke montgomery's like i'm all guard that's he seems to be fully bought in on Mm -hmm. that Uh, they've toyed as you mentioned bob with and had those conversations about josh fryer but it feels like they're going to get to the end of spring and be like well, Josh Fryer is a returning all Big Ten tackle, and he's still going to be the tackle for this yeah. team. Uh, but maybe the competition at center is more interesting than we thought it might be with Seth McLaughlin and Carson Hinsman taking a, a, another step yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, but that conversation, again, last spring, leaving a similar day, Student Appreciation Day, was like, oh, my God, that was a disaster. <laughs> like they, they can't even get through a practice and do anything. Yeah. And now you're like, well, there could be seven or eight options there, and they – did enough against Ohio State's really good defensive line and those crazy blitzes that Nicole was talking about with mm-hmm. CJ and Sonny. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, they just kept announcing okay? it. And again, for the safety, I'm like, oh my <laughs> well, God. Yeah, the coming out period was not a uh, very good period. Yeah. Uh, well, it's for the defense. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, that's how I look at it. I fair was enough, like, fair good enough. for them. Nicole looks They're at me and she team. was like, is this, is this bad? And I'm like, uh, not, you got for, not for the defense. Darkened. Yeah. <laughs> No, for the well, I was at that moment focusing on the O line because they had just like put the O line out for mm-hmm. us to see kind of who was lined up, and then I was like, "Well, I'm really happy for the defense, though." Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> the they time I was great. yelling at the red coat, he's trying to kick me out of practice. He's <laughs> good. No. I was all fired up, and then I watched that. It's like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, there's it's Come been on. a lot. It, the, the way I try to do it is, I'm if I'm going to watch the line, like you have to just kind of watch the line. Mm-hmm. You can't watch anything else, and you can do both sides of it. But I was trying to watch a lot of receivers and secondary because I think that's where a lot of the movement and the, and the linebackers, how they're moving around. And then basically when I see a ball thrown, I, good or bad or whatever it is, then I try to idea, well, who is the quarterback that threw it afterwards? Like, <laughs> that's hard. Yeah, you, see, yeah. Yeah, you oh, see what happened, then you look back exactly there and see who's, who's back there. Yeah. And so it's tough to kind of see what it's the like, pocket. That's a nice ball. Yeah. Who was that? Well, because okay, yeah. then you, but you lose perspective of like, was the pocket being shifted? Uh-huh. Was there movement around him and all these different things? So it's just, there's I'm, been a lot there. I love to hear that you say this. Oh, it's because hard. Because I was like, there is a lot going on here. Nicole, <laughs> that's why they have, that's why they have, 10 position coaches and a head coach. Yeah. And an assistant to yeah. the assistant. Yeah. You can't watch. It, it's oh. literally impossible to try to watch it all. Like I was you'll, feeling it. You can focus on <laughs> two or three things, 
And that's and even then it's like yeah, right, even what just happened? Yeah. yeah, like even you talk like that's why you have two really you need two offensive line coaches. You have five guys you're trying to watch and like pick that up, and that's that's difficult. And the secondary trying to watch a guy and then you tra- follow the, follow the ball, but guys can still be making mistakes mm-hmm. on the other side of the yeah. field. And like just because they didn't throw it to your guy doesn't mean you were doing the right thing. It just means they didn't see him. Yeah. All right, Nicole. What else do you have in there? I I mean that was. That was a lot of it. It was there's a lot of numbers. I see just numbers well, written these down. Are, well, these numbers are the players because I couldn't oh, yeah. look at my roster fast enough oh, to yeah. see their names. So I just like started writing out how they had them laid out on the field. Well, some of the guys changed because posi- like they've changed numbers too since last season. I think I think our sheet was pretty up to date. Yeah, yeah, your sheet yeah, was, yeah, but like good. knowing from what oh, it was wonder, last yeah, year, to see they, somebody in a number like oh, who? they changed. Like Lincoln Keen Olds is wearing three now, mm-hmm. and like there's just some subtle ones. And I'm like looking, like trying to figure out, like who is this, who's that. Uh, like, Gabe Powers, 36. Oh, yeah, he, sure was, he was in there. Gabe's he was in there things. a lot. Yeah, yeah, I like to see that. You know, homegrown kid here in Marysville. Got to meet him James a is, times. James like is a nice rolling kid. a lot of those guys. They're rolling yeah. a lot of guys through. And Cody Simons played a ton, so it's like, hey, yeah, let's yeah, one hundred percent. Let's see what these you guys add can depth do. With those younger guys at this point in time, right? absolutely. You got to yeah. find out if they can play. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. and get them reps so that when the other guys leave, yeah. they yeah. that they're ready. You know. But I thought the same thing about Bryson Rogers. I I saw him get a lot of reps, and I was like, "Have we talked about him before?" And you guys did a story on him this within yeah. the last couple of days, right? Yep. Just talking about him, it was just it was interesting because I personally haven't talked to, haven't said his name yeah. with you guys yet. So it was just it, it was, was a name that you of, hadn't heard that yeah. popped out. And you're like, oh, "Who is that guy? He's yeah. making plays out here." He really was. Yeah. So that was kind of cool to see. It was a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It was the best. We need. Mm-hmm. Bonus it was amazing. Appreciation is media appreciation day would be even better. Media <laughs> appreciation day. Um, we huge all appreciate thank you to you. the students, all the students oh, yeah. that yeah, came and out. Like, showed up in the rain. We were nice. talking about it was a horrific looking morning. Were, it looks it great was, after so, practice. Yeah, yeah it yeah. looked by awesome. two o'clock. It was the great. The sun yeah. was out. It was great, but in the morning it was gross, and it was Easter weekend, so we yeah. didn't know how many kids would come out, and we gave out more wings this year yeah. than we did the year prior. Well, there's some of the recruits like them too, so that was I love that. That was a That's good thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah got to lay the groundwork there. Mm-hmm. That's right. They were excited. That. They had a bunch of big time recruits in there. I know we'll talk to, about Burn with more we of the high school dudes. We saw a few of them. It was. I mean, you can just tell they're big guys. Well, they had a big soccer showcase then for girls soccer starting at three. A gentleman, we were, I flew back the night before, and there was a, a gentleman, his daughter, on the, our flight from Charlotte. And then there was an offense. She's like, oh, that's offensive lineman. Went to school with me there. And there he was walking down. So that was, it was just so crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what else is crazy? That on Tuesday. Mm. Three dollar rooster Onion feathers. feathers. You can get the feathers for three dollars on Tuesday. Mm. With the feather sauce. The feather the sauce comes free. She's sauce. <laughs> at her trying to get in there. Feather the sauce. Feather mm. sauce. We were talking about beforehand. I told her shake mm. Nicole, you can try to change the marketing, but the plucky <laughs> sauce is the best part of it. It's got like a little that. kick. I do like that. A little yeah, horseradish in there. Horseradish, mm-hmm. no See, they put the, the line on it so it doesn't confuse you that it's simply the spicy ranch, Correct. which also is good with that. That is 100%. My wife got bamboozled with that at the house one time when I was like, you well, see you the black line? The that means you, it's horse, you horseradish. You can't go wrong either way. It no, but when you're expecting... It would be a surprise, though. Yes, yeah, so you're it expecting the spicy surprise. ranch and you're getting that. Yeah, it'd be different. It's a different yeah, kind of Yeah, especially if she like, put it on her salad or something. That, that is what she did. She had a whole salad of... Of spicy radish. ranch on a salad? I would. Oh. Some, I feel like Who that has a little kick to that? that. I don't know. Come I'd be on. Sweating, so I'd be sweating eating a salad, I think. Now me, as a huge salad proponent, <laughs> can tell you that <laughs> yeah. that's the way to do it. What yeah. rooster salad do you like, Austin? I like all of them, Nicole. Do you? Yeah, okay. that's a good answer. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> grilled chicken. Uh, the grilled chicken salad. I mean, I'm not good. really supposed to have Caesar, so I can't, you can't have Caesar. Yeah. Um, can you have dressing? Just like a bowl of lettuce. Lemons. We squeeze lemons on them for Austin. Can't have lemon. I, uh, that wasn't no, this was no fruit. It was involved in that process. But actually, I'm done with that. I'll eat whatever I want. Hey, all right. okay. <laughs> We're gonna see a fuller and thicker Austin again. Let's go. I don't bring that. it back. You didn't think he could lose fifty and gain it back <laughs> in the same you year? Watch. You watch. We got this. Brought to you by Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> we have healthy options too. One hundred percent. Oh, the naked. Hey, I've introduced oh, some people to you, the naked. You got me on them. The naked wings was. I've been coming here for twenty years. And I had no idea. You didn't know yeah. that. I ordered no until so I watched you order them one time, yeah. and then I put them on with the rub, and someone's like, "Oh, yeah. that's the way to go." Right. You can and then uh, our guy says, "Put the garlic on, on with top the rub, of the rub." It is delicious. Yes, very. Good. I don't know how I didn't. My like, family <laughs> eats the Nashville hot rub yes. with the Korean barbecue. That's mm. like their favorite. So that's See, and that's yeah, I felt like that's not really advertised here, and so it's. They give you freedom to just... Yeah, yeah I'm not saying about I've looked at this menu a lot. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying I could memorize it and give it to, give it back to you, but I, 
when my kids are like, what do you want? I can, what is there? Okay, well, yeah. here you go. Let me start just firing things away. And I just, the naked. Are, I think we do have to, yeah, I guess well, the other ones are so much. good that you don't yeah. really want to go to the naked. But mm-hmm. sometimes when you eat it every week, you have to make, a, you have to go to the naked. Oh, I could eat those and naked still delicious. Routes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like how Nicole and just guys, didn't believe that I've tried any of the salads. I, I think you've tried them. I'm, <laughs> She's I like, oh, yeah, them. Austin, what's your favorite one? <laughs> well, Don't look at the sheet. <laughs> prior to last October, there's no world where I was eating a salad from literally anywhere. Well, <laughs> and now. The wedge is really good, now too. Now changed. But our you changed. new sauces are hopefully coming out this week. By the way, yes. you, yeah. pre- you promoted those, I don't know, how long ago. And then someone came here with me, and they were asking about it. I was like, I don't know if they have the garlic parmesan yet. It sounds really yeah. good. Mm-hmm. It's this month, In right? April, yeah. April? They'll be here. They're just finalizing, I think, the design of the test menu. And yeah, the sauces will roll out, which okay. will be great. Yeah, That's what's holding idea. it back, the design of the test menu. But the okay. sauces are ready. The, They're they, almost well, ready. Well, wait. They might be ready like as far as like the recipe, the packaging. But as far as distributing them across all locations, that might be. Because it has to go through... The guy who puts them in the packaging and then to GFS, it's a process. Yeah. You told me they were handmade daily, fresh they, sauces. We do. We have the handmade. We have handmade ones, and then we have ones that are packaged just because there's it, it'd be too inconsistent. Like the chips. We're working on that. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got my chips for the week. jay is all, all about it. All right, big month with uh, new rooster sauces coming out. What else, Nicole? Anything? We Spring game have, is in a week and a half. So Yes. We have that. We have saddle up after that. Oh, yeah. boy. The national championship yep. game that, and the final four coming yep. up this weekend, right? Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Nicole's having, don't you just, she's nervous now. No, I'm not. Well, no. it's Ro- just, Roosters we've been watching has, a lot of basketball at our house. And Roosters got Peacock last year for Ohio State games. Oh. So, did. so I'm sure WrestleMania is going to be on at oh, Roosters on Saturday and Sunday. And you are going to that, Austin. Yes. Wow. Bill and I will both be there, so we're going to so have exciting. so much coverage that no one will ever see. I them. hope we talk about it a little. Well, Monday, we're gonna we'll do, do it, it next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we'll be back. Oh, that's just the eclipse. It has nothing to do with wrestling. Oh, that's yeah. right. The eclipse is Monday. It's, it's totally mm-hmm. because of that, not anything else that's on Bill and I's plate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, that's it. Uh, onion feathers, $3 on Tuesday. Nicole, I hope you had a great time at the Thank scrimmage. You. Thanks for having me, guys. I loved it. That notebook is full. We're going to be right back to talk a little bit more about the Buckeyes. Right after this at Roosters, it's a fun, casual joint. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They will always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Welcome back into the Horseshoe Lounge where Berm has Yay, arrived Berm. and he's got his knife out for some reason. Well, <laughs> just whip that out. Hey, how excited was Bill for the Justin Fry mic'd oh, up session? So fired up. Big offensive line day. That's that's Bill's Christmas. Like a three alarm throbber. Yeah, we should have had him on the show to break all that down. But we did that on some snap, Snappy Jays earlier. Mm. So uh, he was fired up about that. Berm, you had something with a knife. I don't yeah. know what that yeah, was. Yeah, I was just going to... Uh, Force you to acknowledge that we're actually going to do Roosters next week because you're driving back from Philadelphia at 1 a.m. That's right. After WrestleMania and not because of the Eclipse. Oh, no, it's, Austin. It's, what? No, it is because of the Eclipse. I oh, yeah. It's got to be the Eclipse. Blame it on me. Why would you well, when he's, I'm he's, not blaming it on you exclusively. I'm blaming it on you and Bill. <laughs> There's also <laughs> other concerns. Schools are going to be closed in Columbus. I don't want you to be on the road in the middle of an eclipse. Honestly, you'll be coming right through you'll like the dead right eye on it. They it. said I mean, like that mid Ohio, mid northern Ohio yeah, region is supposed cars to be on the road. Might be like laser I'm not beams. concerned about that one yet. It turns into a laser beam. <laughs> melts your car. We told they you say, not to be on the roads. They say you would literally die if you did that. And that's I'm doing this for If you. that's all it takes, please. <laughs> Once we release. Well, anyway, if you want me to use this knife, well, yeah, on we you, can just like, do so, that now, Berm. So, I mean, Berm, tell me, oh, go ahead. Where are you going to so go? I was first? just going to say, you know, offensive line talk today. We were we were talking after uh, the availability on Monday about how sometimes coaches are so great when you have a conversation with them away from the cameras, and then how milk toast and boring they are. Well, I mean, come on. on. <laughs> like, and I think it's unfortunate. Chip Kelly is 100% that because he's like, this guy is awesome. No, his like, press he, conference was really good, his yeah, first one. It's unfortunate well, yeah. that the, uh, yeah, so free the average me. fan doesn't get to like see the real personality of yeah. these guys. You know That Justin Fry's a real-ass dude. 
he's a great guy. That's why everyone's like, he, they need to get a new O-line coach. I'm like, can you time out? Dude just got here, inherited these players. It wasn't like he said, I want these, like, and he hadn't been coaching them either. So, like, there's potential for these guys to get better. They are improving under his like coaching and tutelage. It's yeah. so, like, that's that's a real yeah. thing, too. That's what I was just thinking about. Just thinking about <laughs> that. was that. on your brain? Yeah, yeah, I was like, man, because I think people do, like, the, the world of social media allows people to give their comments so freely about where it's things beautiful. are. Um, about what people, what they think people are, et cetera. And then, what they think people are. Yeah, I just want to expand you, upon uh, that. You mentioned some mott sticks. Well, yeah, so I, I figured, thought you were going with the uh, no, mac I wanted and cheese you to have a mott stick, so I figured we should oh, just well. get more for you. Um, it, it, it's just one <laughs> of those You don't think he ordered them? I mean, I just wanted to have a fresh I appreciate one. that. I'm going to eat one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just think it's unfortunate. People don't get to see those sides of these people, you know? Here, here, here bring those over. Oh, that's good. The other side. Red Hot, Red Hot Chili Peppers talked about that. Yeah. That's a big deal. Um, Take me to the place I love. Exactly. Oh. Take me all the way. That's under the bridge. That's yeah. a, that's another so, deal entirely. Um, that's maybe how you felt more after the Cotton Bowl, not necessarily right now. Yeah, that's more like throwing me off the bridge. But that's what something that Justin Fry was talking about today. Like they were so bad in the Cotton Bowl, <laughs> uh, and I, and well, there's no use denying it. Yeah, like we all. Watched oh, he it. wants to fill. <laughs> hey, he's a real. He's not somebody that's going to sugarcoat a turn no. for you. Like but, everyone else, God, and everyone saw what happened out there. You know, Josh Fryer and those guys. Were all, Lincoln. They were all pretty. Yeah. They were all pretty adamant about that game is is fueling them in a way that I, you know, you have to find a way a silver lining here or there, and that one hopefully turns out to be one because the offensive line seems pretty confident in yeah. and they seem pretty happy with what we believe is that starting five. I, I think that they're going to have it, some decent choices there. Oh, yeah, get in there. When you start looking, I mean, I think Carson Hinson's playing a lot better. I think him and yeah. Seth McLaughlin, it's it's closer than what probably people anticipated when they came in. Yeah. And then it's going to be finding that little mix of who are the two guys on the right side and where is Fry or playing. And <laughs> That's the thing that we we were joking about as well because – and like Luke Montgomery played tackle last year, now playing more exclusively guard right now. And he, yeah, so Luke Montgomery said in his in his press conference with us, it's like I am all guard, every rep is a guard. And then Ryan Day and Justin Fry, are like, ah, yeah, we can move Josh Fry around and play guard. Well, why does he need to do that if Luke Montgomery is all guard? We would have thought, okay, we'll let them flip and get reserve, you know, get some reps to evaluate, like. Well, I think Luke Montgomery could tackle. play, he, and but that's true of all. Talking like, they to him, could he, do both, but it yeah. doesn't seem like they actually are doing that well, based on what we've. seen. They've got Tegger right. playing a lot of tackle, yeah. and I think they're trying to giving giving him some opportunities to see what he can do there. Regardless, like you're going to need three dudes to be able to play tackle, and right now they really have one ish and a half. Like you're going to need to develop that a little more. It's just fun. you think about it, and on a day like today, you hear a lot of things and. You, you you ask Justin Fry, why is why is Luke at guard? You ask, and then he tells you one thing. Oh, he's got great recovery time. He's awesome when you know someone gets by him. He's great at recovering. He doesn't make the same mistake twice. Blah. You ask someone else why Luke's at guard. And like, oh, he's got great feet. The basketball feet. He's like, put him in tackle. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, I don't know. They they listen. They have their reasons. And Luke said he's like, I could go back and do it. I'm like, here's the thing, and just having a conference. Like, there will be a day where you can jump back and forth and do that. Mm-hmm. He's a young it's player. It's not this day. You've yeah, been here for right. one year. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Let's focus on one thing. Let's get good at one thing. Yeah. And it's not like, and it's not even just understanding because Luke's a smart kid. I think he could know both. Mm-hmm. But there is like a skill difference to being able to like, hey, I'm going to play quarterback right-handed and now I'm going to do it left-handed. <laughs> I know I'm seeing the same picture, yeah. but like there's an element there to where you're changing things up on how difficult it's going to be with just your technique and your footwork, your short setting, long setting, like how things mm-hmm. happen in front of you. So there's there's some differences there. Um, I like talking to Berm because I, I talked to some of these recruits there, and they had, talked to um, the linebacker from McKinney, uh, who's uh, very talented. And I did not realize Riley, that Riley Pettijohn. Yeah, what's his is Pet Pettijohn? Pettijohn, yes. Um, he's, he's like a ten seven guy in the hundred. Yeah, they said Crazy. that. I talked. So his dad was in Dallas and played for the Desperados, and I was playing for the Cowboys. So we were watching a lot of things out of practice, and then. I have no idea who these. I'm not like Berm, and I don't study the, the high school roles to see who's out there to That's try fair. to slide tough, in. I mean, it is his job. tough but fair. It is, and so <laughs> I'm like, hey, everybody uh, has to find are these guys, guys good. Does, like, is know. this guy good, or is he here like kind of good? And James like, no, he's this is a guy. Like, he's he's a really good player, and he's like a sub eleven. James did guy. not say that on the record. No, or he can't in any say sort of public forum. Well, he's not allowed to, to comment on any high school kid, but 
they're like looking like this is sub is sub eleven. Watch this show. They're gonna turn it in. <laughs> well, it's James Laurinaitis was publicly. Well, he's, well, he's not, not publicly coming to anybody. Oh, I know. Like, but we're like just trying to figure out who's this guy. There's the tackle from the school in Charlotte. What who's, Providence? Providence Day School. Yeah. yeah. What's the gentleman's name? David Sanders. There you go. Like I don't know these guys. The so number one and ranked so like, offensive lineman in the. And country. that's what this. Boom, da- let's go. So I'm, t- I'm getting this information from the, a 16 year old girl and her dad who sat beside me <laughs> on a deal. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm information asking. can come from anywhere, Bob. It can. And like, and she's like, he goes to my high school, and they're like, yeah, and they're like, we're pretty good. I think they were like in the state. I think they I don't know if they won the state last year. They Their quarterback, J- Jaden Davis, is Michigan's freshman quarterback this year. Okay, so yeah, like they have good players, yeah. and so I'm just trying to figure out like these guys. There's a lot of people that come to practice hell there was a million Saturday, people out there. A i'm not even trying there. to figure out if this guys are t- I mean, college students former players <laughs> former players <laughs> yeah, like, like man I, I don't know why i'm like hey you guys justin was there you're, you're coaching who was i talk, <laughs> talking to someone one of our former teams that they've got you have a kid here as a player i mean just you yeah, coaching like Jalen marshall was there yeah i mean there's a random, bunch of guys random guys that haven't been back for a while yeah. like, oh, jackson like, smith and jigbo yeah. was there chris was there i think we saw yeah chimney was there chimney was there brian browning was there i mean a lot of a lot, of, a lot of dudes. Yeah, and so it's dudes. good. Like, it looks great. It's fantastic. But I was just trying to figure out, like, hey, they said it was a big recruiting weekend. I know they had a handful of commitments. Huge recruiting weekend. Yeah, four commitments over the weekend. Started on Friday with uh, defensive lineman London Merritt uh, from Atlanta. Plays at IMG in Florida. And then Saturday, you got uh, Desi Jones, who's a wide receiver from New Jersey, from DePaul High School, uh, same as Ronnie Hickman. Um, his teammate, Deshaun Stewart. It was a safety who committed on Sunday. And then TJ Alford, who's another linebacker that Ohio State has been infatuated with for a while. He Coveting. Committed, he, he committed on Saturday. Um, again. Do you James, like the new boom, the boom deal yeah, that they put I, out I'd there? I heard about the it. The new video? I had, heard, yeah. I had heard about it a week ago that to, to look for that. Um, and I know that they were, they were waiting for a few other guys to send in their videos that never did, and they were pissed about it. So. <laughs> I told him I'll send mine, and I'll actually explode something in my driveway if you want. A garage it'll be a little. Your, a garage it'll your literally forehead. be a boom. Uh, I don't, you know? I'm not sure they want uh, Pyro- pyrotechnics anna- to announce a high school kid with a with Bobby crushing a beer can. And maybe some yeah, fire no. explosions. It's 2024. Yeah. We're, hey, no every, we're, mar- we're marketing uh, everything. That's, that's still a rule, bro. There's no rules. <laughs> I'm a little concerned if you don't think that's a rule, considering how much not time if you're you're an spend talking to high school Not kids. if you're international yeah, waters, right, yeah. maritime law. I mean, you can do whatever you want down there. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I was just curious, like, as the, all that went, but it seemed that the kid, the linebacker, is supposed to be a pretty good guy. Yeah, I mean, a lot, it's it's a really big weekend, uh, aside from Pettijohn, who is – like now that Alfred he's is committed, big. he's now that Alfred has committed, um, Petty John's probably like LB one on the board for Ohio State. So, so these are twenty twenty five guys. Yeah. But this weekend, because that's like his first visit, so now yeah. it's just about like establishing: Are you coming back in two months for your official? And so now you get those locked in. The biggest one is David Sanders, and uh, you know the, the offensive tackle. Sorry, number one ranked player in the country according to some folks. Number one ranked offensive tackle. Like his whole family thing has been, it's too far. It's too far. It's like giving Ohio State the opportunity this weekend to say, like, it's an hour flight from Charlotte. It's, yeah, it's, it's not super a, easy. Yeah. It's not even a bad drive to Charlotte. And his his other schools that he's really into are Alabama, Clemson, Georgia. And <clears throat> the argument really from Ohio State is it takes you longer to drive to those places than it does to fly here. Yeah. So get over it, essentially. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's, I mean, that's, 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 let's go ahead and get over it. Yeah, I tell my wife that. That's a great negotiation. I mean, I, I just get I, over I, it. It works all I, the time. It's, it's like, hey, if, if, everything else, if everything else that you want is here, yeah. you know, are you going to let this stop yeah, you yeah. when it's really not as big a deal as you think, especially because we live in the NIL world now yeah. where it's not like you're going to have to worry about funds or anything like that because I'm sure there's ways to work these things into a contract if you really, really mm. wanted to, mm. um, at, which – I'm sure other schools around the country have done before. So um, the number one ranked running back in the country was in town. Also, Jordan Davison from modern day high school in California. He oh, was, yeah. So and then you had Jamie French, who some people consider the number one receiver in the country, um, you know, it, or at least a top five receiver in the country uh, across the board. Uh, Vernell Brown, another Florida receiver, top 10 receiver. Like it, it's it was a very, very important weekend. And now mm. you have like a little bit of time till the spring game, and then you have another big weekend. That one will be probably less impactful than the Student Appreciation Day trips just because of the names that we had this weekend. And then it builds to How did you think that it looked out there, knowing that you live in this world? Because I know they were they made it Easter weekend. I'm like, yeah, I was kind of worried whether there'd be enough students out there. 
but there was a lot of former guys out there, which was great. That's more, much more important, obviously. Yeah, and just, yeah. yeah, and I just want to make sure like it looks full. It's bad yeah, if it like, looked, hey, it looked good. It was, it was full. Well, yeah. I didn't even want it any more full. You can't no, no, not yeah. safe. I thought it was the right amount. <laughs> yes, yeah, you, had to, you had to be in certain areas to see things. You know, I didn't want to bring my kids. So I just when there's a lot of people there, I go. It's the get back coach and get back coach Schlegs wasn't there. I'm like so, the preeminent get back coach in all of the world, land wasn't there because it's a four sided practice that you have to guard okay. to make sure people aren't getting injured. One thing I was really happy about is I didn't notice any like memorabilia hawks around this weekend. I did. Did, did you? I, did, I didn't yeah. see many. I mean, we've seen a lot more in the past where they were a lot of those people who snuck in, and and that's something I think Ohio State you know needs to probably not allow, but. What do you when you say not allow? Like, what are you suggesting? I mean, it's like a nightstick taser situation. Yes. Take them out back. I think whatever the red coat had to throw yeah, Jay Z out. Red red coat coat to it's trespassing. Out. Okay, you're not a student. You're not a former player. You're not part of the credential media. You don't belong there. So, um, if you're Did a, the students have to show ID. Yeah, I yeah. don't know, but they were there before I got there. I mean, no. they were like tailgating. I think you know, at some point it, just gets, it gets pretty loosey goosey around there. And uh, but yeah, overall, it's uh, I thought it went pretty well. I, I don't. Do you think that the timing worked out? You mentioned uh, Jordan Davis in there. It felt like Ohio State was wrapping up a conversation with Carlos Lachlan at about the exact same time. Is that mm. uh, just fortuitous? I, I don't believe it's fortuitous. I don't think it was just uh, total serendipity, but mm. uh, I do think that it's not um, It's not ironic, mm. let's say that, that Ohio State's presumptive new running backs coach, which should be finalized by the end of – Monday show. or Tuesday, um, is the maybe the one coach in the country that Jordan Davison has a better relationship with than he had with Tony Alford. So that's not entirely coincidental, I'd imagine. Um, but it's it, – I know that Ryan Day's message to recruits has been, this is Ohio State, we're going to find mm-hmm. a great replacement, and that's all you need to know. So I was just disappointed <clears> they <throat> passed on Ross. Because he really has. I asked set him about on. that actually. I, I and it. and Rob. Yeah, and I, Rob. I brought it up to 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 Ross Bjork uh, at the Jake Diebler press conference when he was in Ohio. So I said, "Hey, you got to talk to you, Bobby Carpenter. This great idea." And uh, that was our first meeting of, of first conversation That's that good. I had with. So Ross. he definitely nice knew, little, little knew your business. So he walked away. He's like, "Don't so, ever let me talk to that guy." Yeah, again. it ended <laughs> with him <laughs> telling me to f off, <laughs> um, which but I wasn't very expecting. Nice but then I was like, "All right, I like the cut of your jib." <laughs> I like the cut of okay, your jib. But if you can't do it, what about Bobby what about, Carpenter? What about dad? Rob? What about Rob Carpenter? <laughs> Rob Carpenter. The chip may have been on board with that after they after he met him a couple weeks yeah. ago. But I, I don't know if my dad's got the chops to <laughs> to even stand out there for multiple practices. He can do one, one every now and then, but he's almost seventy. Get him a golf cart right around. Well, it was an it was an interesting search for Ohio State because it they did pursue and have negotiations and conversations with multiple other candidates before they got to Lachlan. <laughs> But the fact that that is true and you also wound up getting someone who's very highly regarded as a recruiter, he has a fascinating uh, resume and career journey from federal law enforcement like that he wasn't even allowed to talk about the things that he did mm. while moonlighting as a volunteer <laughs> coach. It's like Memphis. Diddy. Maybe he should be. Uh, maybe, I think, uh, I think no, far from Diddy. No, the opposite. I don't think we well, Diddy's not allowed in. to talk about things he did. Mm. Uh, Oh, I didn't know we were doing Berms conspiracy. Hey, can I have another one of those? Oh, yeah, dude. Are we, uh, there. anyway, uh, the fact maybe, that it wound, they wound that up makes, with this. That makes sense listening. I, I saw one clip of him talking just yeah. about how he handles his room yeah. in a way, and it's like, that makes sense coming from it because he's like, no nonsense. He is no nonsense. Yeah, gonna, he is con- very highly thought of as, as a recruiter and a grinder. He's yeah. put in the hours to make it work. He doesn't have the longest tenure in college football at the highest level, and he's just been in Oregon for a couple years, but uh, everybody – that I know who I've, I've got feedback on, they swear by this guy, and um, that that could be someone if, quote-unquote, you miss out on three or four mm-hmm. other guys and you wind up taking someone with this reputation and from yeah. a Big Ten competitor at the same time that now Oregon has to turn around and deal with this <clears throat> yeah. in, in April the way Ohio State did throughout March. That feels like a, still a positive oh, and, outcome. Oh, and he has a good relationship with the number one running back in yeah. next year's class. That doesn't hurt. No, that helps. <laughs> I'm excited. That's why I was curious, yeah, just good. like the perception. Cause Ryan wasn't in a rush, and so I think there were some people that were concerned at the length of time mm-hmm. well, I think- it, it was transpiring. But like to me, in this sense, like time is a flat circle. Like There's no timeline that you actually needed to adhere to other than you probably wanted to have it done by May. I think that you, I mean, selfishly, 
as a coach, I'm sure, like they would want to spend some time in spring actually yes, getting those practices. Well, absolutely. Like, to me, I don't know that I, I felt like it was concern that the length of time was ticking away, but it was also that they would invest an amount of time in DeMarco Murray and then be used for a raise elsewhere or, you know, stand Drayton and then not being able to get over a buyout situation with Temple. Like to have to spend that amount of time and then st- – not, not even maybe start over, but just continue and pick it up with somebody else. Like that was extending the window when you knew like Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins can, they probably don't need a position coach with the experience. About they have. Ryan day. Well, okay, fine. Do you see that wheelie? Down they'd, be, up to, they'd be okay. If you, but, if two, two things I think are at play here as far as timing goes, when it comes to Ohio state and Carlos Lachlan specifically is that Oregon hasn't started spring practice yet. So, it, oh really? They're like on the old Buckeye program. I mean, they're out in the you know Pacific Northwest. They get started a little late, so they're three. Are they hours, still on quarters. Three out hours there? behind. Um, I so I think that that I don't know the answer. That allows that conversation to probably go a little easier than it did with other guys who were already in practice. In yeah. practice. <clears throat> and number two, the substantial buyout for Carlos Lachlan dropped considerably on oop, today by, by half. Uh, cut in half today. Oh really? So <laughs> they're not the. This is the most interesting contract. Sorry, Berm. I don't know that yeah. I've ever seen this because Carlos Lachlan just got a raise. He was two uh, weeks ago from ten- he was involved in Tennessee's search for a running backs coach. He got a new contract from Oregon, but the one hundred percent buyout only lasted for like six weeks and then dropped on April first. Uh, only lasted for sixteen days. Never seen that. I, th- I think really? they were working on it uh, in February, but maybe maybe I'm that seems it was only reported because publicly they, because I, I think my my presumption would be I think they might be starting practice like today or tomorrow. Well, they've got to eventually. So I would have thought, I think maybe (laughs) it's it's lined up for like to start a spring practice because at that point they think, yeah, he's here. We're starting late. No one else is going to have an opening. And now all of a sudden, oops, Ohio State has an opening. They had a guy leave during during practice. So should be done officially, I would imagine, sometime soon, barring a catastrophic turn of events. Turned out okay. Yeah. No, I think that's every position filled on the coaches' happen, right? That's the last one that we had. That's the entirety of the staff. We were. I think operating under the the pretense that there's there's only a handful of guys around the country that you would look at and consider an upgrade over Tony Alford. Um, obviously, the tenure that he'd been at Ohio State that's that means something. But I so, think, think there was the Demarco Murray, the Robert Gillespie, the Stan Drayton's. Like those are upgrades, and I think this is probably as close you as you get to like a like for like mm-hmm. uh, replacement. Interesting note, Oregon still on quarters. Who are they? And their quarter just started today. So I'm guessing yeah. that on Monday, April 1st, so I'm guessing they'll probably have their first spring ball yeah, starting this, this week as they're just coming off break. So that'll probably be that's su- how ours was. That's how ours, yeah. That'll probably be super fun for Oregon to get to the midway point of their spring camp and then have the portal open. I bet that's that, I don't even understand. So if you have like a bad practice, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving. You I'm not getting here. reps today. I'm going to the portal. You didn't give me enough reps in practice. We're done here. <laughs> So what is, what is really the, have, what, the portal opens in two weeks? April fifteenth. April fifteenth. It's portal. Wow. It's something else. It's portal season. That baby. is that is going right to be right after a, the Ohio State spring. The word game, you're right? looking for is dumb, Bob. That's yeah, dumb. that's an interesting. You hit the nail element. on the head there. But they try to. Well, I thought it was all about academics and all mm. about these things. <laughs> the problem is when you have schools that are operating under the same um, rules, but yet their one is on a semester basis and another's on a quarters basis. That is where there's going to be a huge issue with all that. And it's not getting better. Those look like flappers. They look like they're all your Those are flappers only. Those are sharks. Oh, they need to be But they need to be to gizzle. We'll get those boxed up. Don't worry. Yes, don't worry. Always gets eaten. (laughs) Always consumed. Which is a fun, casual joint. And it was great that they allowed us to come back for a fun, casual chat this week, Bob. Were you worried that they weren't going to let you back? Yes, every week I'm worried that I do something wrong. Is Nicole going to throw me out? And then I try and... Maybe some... The panel will say that the mac and cheese bites were only a seven out of ten that week. That week, I was a little bit concerned. I was a little worried about that one. Too. I was like, "Why are I mean, we?" She's going to hear about that? this. It's but, not going to uh, be good. I guess that means it's truth in advertising <laughs> because Berm. I'm never going to lie to my people. Won't even. Won't <laughs> never even lie to America. <laughs> Although you shouldn't put sugar on mac and cheese bites. Either. That sounds That's gross. Yeah, you are that. you serious? What is wrong with you? I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. I've certainly never done it, but I wonder if it would, you know, add a little. A little extra well, flair. Something. A little, a little kick. Sweet and spicy. You put the hot sauce on there. Oh, All yeah. right. Now we're but as long as Nicole will have us back, we'll be here <laughs> next Tuesday. As long as we survive the eclipse. As long as he survives the WrestleMania. In the eclipse, bro. <laughs> yeah, why, why are you acting like they're... Oh, look at that. It's one thing and not the other. Whatever. Remember um, the last eclipse we had? 
Like no. 2017, I came down. I was in Columbus for something for that. Why weekend. is everybody making such a big deal of this? Is the last one was seven years ago. I don't know. That's what this I'm one is a. Complete, and it was a, it's, it's like a generational. That one was supposed to be like 90 percent, and it, it was nothing. I read that this is going to last for three days. Also, I think it's supposed to rain. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Easter. Bob. Also, I think it's supposed Bob to be a rainy. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm too distracted. I think it's supposed to be a rainy, <laughs> a rainy, cloudy day next Tuesday. Also, so that's going to oh, be or next Monday. Which All this is going to happen, and there's going to government's going to put clouds up there. The point is, <laughs> Eclipse Willing will be back next Tuesday to preview Ohio State's spring game. Did any of you ever drive a Mitsubishi Eclipse when they were cool? I wish I still would, I always wanted one. <laughs> it's still, the well, spider. They still are. Yeah. Yeah, those, those the collector's spiders. item. Yeah, those were those were dope in the day. Thanks to Nicole Cox and Roosters. <laughs> thanks to Jay Z. And thanks that's to these him delicious. Over there. Yes. That's you. Bob. Onion feathers. Three dollars all day long Tuesday. Plucking sauce. Berm. I'm Austin. This has been the end of another strange show. We'll see you next week. <laughs>